The World Health Organization has marked today as World No Tobacco Day to raise awareness about the dangers of tobacco to protect our youth. Joining us this morning to talk more about preventative measures is Dr. Ernest Hawk with the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Good morning. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning. I know this is a really important initiative to protect, uh, you know, especially our youth from, from the impacts and the effects of, of tobacco. Uh, and, and now's the time to do that. Absolutely. MD Anderson's committed to this work because about still 25% of all cancers are attributable to uh, tobacco use. And of course, although tobacco rates have fallen at a population level, uh, the rise of vaping um, mm -hmm. brings about a great concern for uh, an entirely new generation to be addicted to nicotine. And so we're interested in both of those issues. Yeah, I feel like so often there's always a threat, right? Whether it be marketing, advertising, pressure from your peers or, or your, your big sister, your older brother, whatever that be, there's always some sort of pressure. What are some proven ways to prevent youth from being hooked on tobacco? Yeah, well, it's uh, it, it, it's a uh, it's an all tell, all hands on deck yeah. kind of an effort. It requires public education at uh, kind of a population level, um, and we have a variety of different programs that MD Anderson endorses to try to reach those populations from mm -hmm. middle school, high school, college, uh, into the general population. Second, it requires progressive policies that uh, create uh, clean air spaces. And then um, also important for those who are addicted to nicotine already to provide cessation services so that they can be successful in their quit attempts. Mm -hmm. To the person who says vaping isn't as harmful as smoking, what would you say to them? Uh, well, we don't know yet, honestly. Uh, the long-term uh, impact of, of any of these practices is what matters most to both patients as well as the public as well as to providers like myself so it's uh, we don't really know what the long-term implications are of vaping um, we know that uh, for some individuals short term can be harmful to their health in a whole variety of ways probably the most established is the impact on the developing brain so we're particularly concerned mm -hmm. about um, avoiding uh, youth exposure to nicotine because of its impact on learning, as well as things like attention, uh, as well as uh, memory. Hmm. That's an interesting conversation. So often I feel like this conversation, when it comes to vaping, focuses on the lungs, but to know that you know it could have some impact on, on learning and, and, and neuro, that's, that's pretty fascinating. Yeah, and nicotine, is, uh, that's probably its most, uh, most established effect is actually adverse impact on youth developing brain. Wow. And the brain develops up to about the age of 26. Okay. The dangers of secondhand smoking. I know this is a very old conversation that's been had once or twice before. Yeah, well, there's substantial. Uh, again, uh, tens of thousands of individuals experienced cancer who didn't smoke themselves but lived in a household, either as a child or as yeah. a spouse. So another very important area. Indeed, uh, in 2014, now about 10 years ago, MD Anderson committed itself to a program called End Tobacco. It has three goals, reducing exposure to the general population through preventive efforts. Secondly, treatment of those who uh, are addicted to nicotine through tobacco cessation efforts. And then third, reducing secondhand smoke exposure. Mm -hmm. What can parents do to protect their children from whether it be smoking, vaping, the use of tobacco and other forms? Really begins and ends with education as well as creating an environment that, that values and promotes health. Um, again, vaping products may be safer than traditional tobacco, but certainly lead to addiction, and yeah. that's not good for anyone. And um, there's no health benefits from any of those products, of course. And so the only, um, the biggest challenge is keeping the exposure down. So parents need to educate, but also remain aware and to answer questions as mm -hmm. they rise. And have that op open door policy if their child has a question. Let them Absolutely. come to you first. Critically important. And ask those questions. Dr. Hawk, thank you so much for your time this morning.